Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is now just 130 days away from its official release by writer and director J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio, as well as creator George Lucas. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, what's really exciting about Episode 9 is that we do know that this film, at the end of the day, is going to be, well, a revelation film. It's going to contain many different twists and turns that will lead to saga-wide implications within the Skywalker saga that will really change how we view the past eight Star Wars movies. Now, on top of all of this, we do know that this movie is going to take a lot of risks by J.J. and George Lucas and Chris, and exactly how they are going to use this movie as a tool, if you will, to connect it to the prequels, the originals, and even using Star Wars Legends as a form of inspirational source material. Now, these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film, and when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very exciting for Episode 9. Now, specifically, shot descriptions consisting of a sequence where it's explained that both Rey and Kylo Ren are holding hands, where they are said to be shrouded in darkness and walking on a metallic bridge, where it's explained that they are said to be using a power called flow walking. During this scene, it's said that John Williams composed a magical score as Kylo and Rey witness moments of the past, as well as visions of where one of which is said to involve the very moment when Anakin Skywalker is kneeling before Palpatine from Episode 3, where Palpatine says, rise to Anakin and how he shall go by the name of Darth Vader. A revised track of the Imperial March is said to play during the sequence where another scene is said to involve a vision of Supreme Leader Snoke in a black robe, facing Darth Vader and handing him a complex looking device that glows in a red hue that is said to hold a connection to the beyond and the spiritual realm. These visions of the past through Rey and Kylo's eyes are said to be a vital part of the story for Episode 9. JJ was said to have been inspired by the Worlds Between Worlds to use the flow walking technique in Episode 9. So let's go over a couple of parts about this because we do know that Episode 9 is really going to show us different sides of the Force, the Jedi, the Sith, and everything related to the Star Wars franchise, and how he's really going to evolve the franchise when it comes to the live action Star Wars movies. So with the Rise of Skywalker, we do know that J.J. Abrams is trying to treat this movie with special care. He's absolutely trying to do something grand that's going to make itself sit disconnected from, of course, The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens, and almost as if it's its own movie. And I will say that this film, in a real strange way, I don't know if you guys would agree, but it almost feels like The Rise of Skywalker is a true sequel to that of The Force Awakens rather than a sequel to that of The Last Jedi. That's just how I feel. So the one piece that I do want to go over is the flow walking technique. Now while Kylo and Rey are using this, they are holding hands as they walk through a environment that is said to be shrouded in darkness. They're walking on top of a bridge, once again, very much like the worlds between worlds, where one of the visions that they come across is said to involve Anakin kneeling down to Palpatine, where Palpatine is telling Anakin to rise and naming him Darth Vader. Now as this all happens, John Williams was actually said to compose a new track of the Imperial March, a revised version of that music that's going to go along with that particular vision that both Rey and Kylo Ren will witness during their flow walking session. Now, the other piece that really intrigues me a lot and I think is really going to connect to future comics and books has to do with Snoke and Darth Vader. Now, what's really intriguing about this is that we have a moment in which Rey and Kylo Ren witness the very moment in which Snoke and Vader exchange this strange looking device that is said to glow in a red hue that is said to hold a connection to the spiritual realm. Now, Snoke is said to appear far different in this particular scene as he's cloaked in a black robe. Now, I don't know exactly, you know, where things are going with the flow walking technique. We do know that Jason Solo used it in Star Wars Legends. By the way, Jason Solo was the original version of Ben Solo from Star Wars Legends. So, what I find so fascinating about this is that Episode 9 is really trying to be a movie that has a lot of innovation, right? It has a lot of original content that we have never seen before in a live action Star Wars movie. I think that the flow walking, the flash fights, and of course the different techniques of how they're gonna do the lightsaber duels are really gonna be the highlights of episode nine without a doubt, as far as changing everything goes, right? So with that being said, episode nine does have a lot of potential to mark itself down as the best of the sequel trilogy and to really mark itself down as 
a movie that takes a lot of risks, but also has a lot of nostalgia attached to it. And JJ has even hinted before in the past that this movie could very well be the longest Star Wars film in history. He even said over at Star Wars Celebration that this movie can be anywhere from five minutes all the way up until four hours. Does that necessarily mean it'll be four hours? Not really, it could mean that it'll be like three and a half, maybe three flat, we'll have to wait and see. So I would really love to hear what you guys have to say about all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time.